the statistics tell the story. There are about 50 million gun owners in America. Close to half of all American households possess guns. More than 200 million guns all told. And we buy about four and a half million more guns every year. Whether you like it or not, for better or worse, it's a fact. America is an armed nation. And to gun owners, the vast majority of whom are law-abiding citizens, that's the way it was meant to be. We're just out here, like I said, exercising our rights. Um, we're just here to have a good time. Now more than ever, many gun owners are proudly, aggressively asserting their rights, reaffirmed by a conservative Supreme Court, to keep and bear arms, proudly, openly, in public. We forgot the cheese. In Portland, Maine, a few dozen gun enthusiasts have gathered for a barbecue at Back Bay Cove to promote the right to openly carry weapons in the state and convince their non-gun-owning fellow Mainers it's okay. They're not used to it and it's lack of knowledge. The more that they know, the more comfortable they'll be with it. And that's really why we're here. We're showing them that law-abiding citizens carrying handguns is completely fine, completely normal. That's Shane Bellinger. He's 20 years old, a pre-med student at the University of Southern Maine. He organized this open carry event. And in many ways, Shane is the new face of the gun rights movement in America. Having more firearms really deters crime. This is the old face of the gun rights movement in America. From my cold, dead hand. For decades, the National Rifle Association has dominated the gun debate, but now is feeling the heat from small, passionate, nimble, and focused grassroots groups like Shane Bellinger's. The NRA is, well, it has 4.3 million members currently, and it is a massive organization that's kind of an umbrella organization for all gun owners and firearms enthusiasts. And what we are is we're more of a, a right to bear arms, right to carry uh, openly as well as concealed every day. They want guns in really every corner of American society. Dennis Hennigan is the vice president of the Brady Center to Prevent Gun Violence. He says the little gun groups and the spontaneous meetups mark a new challenge to gun control efforts and to the NRA. I think a lot of these uh, pro-gun extremists uh, sense that the politics of guns has changed. They sense that their time has come. Is there tension between what the NRA is trying to do and what these other groups are doing? Well, uh, there are two sides to the coin. On the one hand, I think these groups are actually willing to take the NRA's rhetoric to its logical conclusion. On the other hand, when you have people who are openly carrying their guns into Starbucks, um, it causes enormous concern among other people who are going into Starbucks. It causes a backlash. Starbucks was the target of a pressure campaign to allow customers to openly carry their weapons in states where it's legal to do so. That's 43 of the 50 states. Starbucks CEO Howard Schultz told me earlier this year he felt caught off guard by the movement and had no choice but to relent. We woke up one day and all of a sudden Starbucks was in the middle of this uh, political crossfire. It's a very difficult, fragile situation. We're trying to abide by the law. The movement to open Starbucks to weapons was not spearheaded by the NRA. It grew on social networks and bulletin boards, internet chat rooms, and mobile phone texts. The kind of forces that fueled Shane Bellinger's little group and has revved up more established local gun organizations like this one in Virginia. We're a family of people that are exercising a, a, one of the most important constitutional rights in the country and one that's uh, usually under the biggest threat and has been. But you don't get there by dividing yourselves up. This is the Virginia Citizens Defense League, and they are not happy with the NRA. They're the 800-pound gorilla. People are used to the name NRA, and that, that's, those that aren't really into gun rights don't know better. And they think that's the only real organization out there. The long-simmering tensions between the NRA behemoth and local gun groups exploded into a nasty family fight this spring when the NRA muscled Congress into exempting it and it alone from some key provisions of the campaign finance reform legislation. This is a carve out, not for the gun rights community, this is a carve out for a single organization. 
they're hopping mad, these, these smaller groups. They're increasingly seeing the NRA as a big, bloated, bureaucratic, too conservative gun group, and they're starting to oppose their own leaders in the NRA. Well, that's right. I mean, in this case, uh, the NRA basically jumped into the last lifeboat and left the rest of the pro-gun community to sink. We asked the NRA several times to speak to us about all this. They refused. But for all the bad blood between the NRA and the local groups, they're still on the same team as we saw in Virginia. How many of you are NRA members? Geez, I'm surprised. <laughs> How many like how many life members? Okay, all right, look at that, we got lots of life members too. The goal of the grassroots gun rights movement is simple, more guns in more places in more of America. And while that may worry many Americans. These people are intimidating. Uh, I feel eminently <laughs> unsafe around them. Today's gun rights advocates have a blunt response, too bad. More guns in more public places is what protects people. 